Hello, uh, my name's Isaac Hughes Dennis. I'm a singer, songwriter, and, and general ranter. Um, I've got a song, firstly, about um, lockdown and the lockdown experience, and um, general advice um, as to what to do if you find yourself uh, bored out of your mind um, in this period of pandemic. And it goes like this You've been in isolation for a week or more, and you've started to have a dry cough. You started to worry that the end is nigh and you're wanting a fitting send off. The hospitals are closed and there are no more masks and there's no paper left to wipe your ass. But if you take my advice and you follow my words, you could still make this a better world. If you just cough on a Tory, they got us into this mess. Who cough on a Tory on behalf of the NHS? Take your daily jog down to your nearest mansion Find a Rupert Murdoch or Richard Branson Cough on a Tory, make this the plague of the underworked and the overpaid Yes, just cough on a Tory, it's such an easy thing to do Cough on a Tory if you've got any sign of the flu They're all old and vulnerable and when they get ill Won't they sure be grateful for that 35 mil in the NHS that we got from Brexit Thanks to that no one ever gets sick Yes, cos Boris Johnson's a corona cunt. Next, let's get Pretty Patel and Jeremy Hunt. Let's make the end of the quarantine a working class revival. Hashtag cough on a Tory. Let's make it go viral. Yeah, some awesome. lockdown advice for you there. Um, this next song um, is inspired by... Um, recent events um, and it's a song about not really wanting to write about recent um, events but as uh, your resident um, political satirist I felt sort of a moral obligation to um, and so this is the, the royal family song <laughs> I don't give a fuck about the royals, they don't give a fuck about me. The only great achievement of the monarchy is getting Piers Morgan off of ITV. No, I don't give a fuck about the royals, because they don't give a fuck about me. I'm about as impartial on Meghan Markle as I am on Popery. So if I don't give a fuck about the royals, then why did I write this song? Well, the truth is I wrote it to stay relevant, and it probably won't be for long. No, I don't give a fuck about the royals. I'll give you my two pence Just cos I don't give a fuck about the royals Doesn't mean I sit on the fence You see, when Meghan married Harry And thus into the family Did she not think a pure-blood nationalist cult Might come with bigotry? And when Harry married Meghan It seemed very clear to me That they loved each other Very much like Paul Daniels loves Debbie McGee There you are, that's the royal family song um, For you there Um... This next song um, is a song for um, Chancellor Rishi Sunak. Um, it's uh, a song uh, in regards to the comments he made about uh, artists and uh, the arts industry. He went on to ITV, um, as I'm sure you know, and um, made the heavy insinuation that um, artist jobs aren't uh, viable, aren't savable, um, and aren't financially worth it um, in, in this uh, pandemic. Um, and he, he said that um, and obviously angered a whole load of, of artists. Um, and obviously he got the greatest sort of um, artistic backlash um, off, the, off the back of that. Um, and I joined in, I thought, you know, um, I need to write this song about it. But at the same time, I, it was difficult for me because I, I heard that I wasn't going to get paid um, what I necessarily deserve for my craft. And I'm a heartless capitalist and I only do this for the job for the money. Um, and so uh, what you're about to hear is the most half-assed protest song of all time. Um, it's a song for Rishi Sunak and it goes like this. Rishi Sunak. 
What a shame that nothing insulting rhymes with your name Cos I've written you this half arse song It won't be very witty and it won't be very long And it might be pretty shitty but it won't be very funny Cos I only give a shit when it's earning me money Cos I'm a bit like John Lennon and a bit like Bob Dylan In that I only get political when it makes me a shilling But other than this, I don't have any transferable skills Like honestly mate, I can't even play guitar And evidently, I can't even rhyme I just talk a lot of shit all of the time And I like to go on rambles and I talk a lot of bollocks And I'm really good at making and a big fuss over nothing And I use fancy words And I sound like a twat And in the public eye I'm a laughing stock So with my current CV Are there any available positions? Because currently I'm sounding like a Tory politician Oh Rishi, Rishi, please choose me I've got a grade C maths in GCSE And I've got one in English So I know how to spell And I've got one in IT For Microsoft Excel What a shock to the ego and an utter disservice for a Tory MP to call my job worthless. What absolute hypocrisy, it's fucking bleak. It's like having Shane McGowan telling you to brush your teeth without culture and the arts. You silly twat, we'll only have Coldplay and take that. And no one wants that for their life soundtrack. So remember what a pratty is, Rishi Sunak. There you are, that's my uh, song for Rishi Sunak there. Um, Hopefully um, he'll receive it. If you if you're watching, send it to him. Give him a give him a poke on Facebook. Um, uh, I, I appreciate um, if you've stuck around this long. It's um, yeah, very nice, albeit digitally, um, to to do things like this. Um, this is a song about comments that I got um, back when I could perform uh, live. It's um, it's about a specific comment that um, a specific type of person would make um, if it were a specific gig in which they were sort of floating about a bit. Um, you know, the ones where they're sort of mingling and floating and sort of catch the drift about what you what, what you do. Um, but you know, don't don't give it a full um, full attention. And I had people come up to me um, and say, "Oh, oh, you were, you were brilliant. We we really enjoyed your stuff. Um, have you considered going on X Factor?" Which I think is hilarious, um, given uh, what you've just seen. Um, and my stock response has ended up being, oh, I would, but I, I don't have the sub story. Um, but I, I've been thinking recently, and um, yeah, it may, maybe that doesn't hold true. So this is a song um, about X Factor, and this is a song about my tragic upbringing, because um, as you can imagine, it takes a hell of a lot of indoctrination to get a young person uh, to come out quite the way that I have. Um, so this is a song called I'd Probably Be Shit on X Factor. It feels like this. One of the keys to popularity is to have a childhood trauma or a sob story Like my nan died of cancer, she never heard me play Now I'm making so much money, nanny's rolling in her grave I have had a happy life, reasonably Not encountered too much strife but stay with me, there's one piece of trauma you should know So that people still buy tickets to my shows Throughout my life there's been a parenting fail I can already hear the headlines in the Daily Mail I was raised by anarcho activists My first words were the solidarity fist Making homemade deluxe for my father My family photos are in balaclavas Before I had my first set of teeth I was already chanting Fuck the police! The reason I know about the state of our nation Is the parental political indoctrination Not just activists, punks too. I was two when I had my first sip of special brew. I was born in a mosh pit. How about you? And I never needed Calpol, cause I was on glue. Never once did I wanna hear about black sheep. It was Joe's drummer scream that sent me to sleep. I found a radical icon within Bo Peep because she broke out of the system and stopped following the sheep. How young is too young for someone to throw a petrol bomb? anyone's job then my parents were trusty to birth and raise an uncompromising crusty a bourgeois bashing bastard boy who'd sooner use super glue than any child's toy it's too fucking to see if I fulfill my prophecy but I sure as shit know that it sucks to be me cause how young is too young to mentally scar a child into the harsh harsh world of radical politics very much that's the end of that one um and so um on that on that cheery note um I think I'll I'll do one more. Um, this next song um, is a song uh, about religion. 
it's a song um it's a song about jesus um and yeah it's something that i i take very seriously um it's a, it's a song about jesus it's a song about um a very specific part of jesus's life that i think is criminally um underlooked um and you know so a and it's something that really resonates me with me as a as a as a teenager, um, because you know we 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 hear um, a hell of a lot of, of of talk about you know the baby Jesus and the, the star and the three wise men, and then they suddenly skip a massive chunk, and then he's an adult and he's on the cross, and then he dies. Um, but I, I think there's been a great injustice done in that um, you know there there is no mention of, of, of teenage Jesus um, and so you know what what I'm about to do now has been described as religiously intolerant oh, I, don't, I don't see it as that I think I'm um, taking one for the Christians um, and, and, Jew, and the Jews and the, and the Muslims and, um, and, and taking one for, for all um, I think people deserve to know and so you know it's, it's just a just an idea this is sort of a have a, a friendly sort of suggestion box, I suppose. Um, so uh, I've been Isaac Keys Dennis, thank you very much. Um, this last song um, is to the tune of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. Um, personally, I think he'd be rolling in his grave, but it gives me great pleasure to think that maybe Jeff Buckley gets some sort of kick out of it in, in heaven or wherever he is. Um, this has got a sing-along chorus as well, and so if you want to feel um, like you're participating in something live, then um, by all means, yell it out. This is called Teenage Jesus. Well, if you'll settle down, let me paint you the scene. We're on a street corner in the year 17, and adolescent Jesus wears ripped skinny jeans. His mates Abe and Moses own cannabis farms and some cheap ketamine that they stole from their barns. This is what they left out of the Bible. Teenage Jesus, teenage Jesus, teenage Jesus, teenage Jesus. Well, behind the bike sheds, he'll have a quick smoke And then he'll turn water into vodka and coke Oh, woe is him, the moody emo Jesus He's got shoulder-length hair and there's black round his eyes And if he listens to grunge, it'd be no surprise Cos this is the ballad of emo Jesus Emo Jesus Emo Jesus attention seeker. He was in the in crowd of his 12 whole followers. He was quite proud. 12 followers, that is, on his Twitter. And they all formed a band and they rehearsed in his inn. They were called Christ and the Christy Inns. That needs work. This was the start of Rock God Jesus. Rock God Jesus. Rock God Jesus, 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 Rock God I appreciate we might have taken this a bit far But behind the song there most definitely are some Moral values to take with you Like don't discriminate someone who's different from you Cause Jesus was an immigrant Palestinian Jew 
And he was most definitely an emo. So for emo Jesus, emo Jesus, emo Jesus, he will be with Cheers. No, no, uh, not at all. Um, I, I think um, it's um, horribly, horribly um, corrupt. And not only that, but I'm horrifically underqualified. Um, as you can probably tell, I think I shall uh, just uh, stick to sort of swearing and ranting when when everything goes wrong, because then I can have someone to blame other than myself. Uh, I grew up listening to um, all sorts, um, but I mentioned in my set about my sort of crusty anarchist parents, and so I grew up around a lot of um, folk and, and punk, um, namely sort of David Rovics and uh, Attila the Stockbroker and Rob Johnson, uh, Grace Petrie, and a lot of these artists are people that I now gig alongside of, which is uh, absolutely uh, massive pleasure um yeah it's been great i think it's made me more angry um i my my shows before lockdown were already very angry but i think um yeah sort of angry and potentially a little demotivated um but i think that's a common denominator with absolutely everybody right now i like um something greasy that i can whack in the oven um, and it'd be ready in 15 minutes if it's sort of got a whole pan of oil in it um, and it's it's ready in 15 then it's absolutely for me uh, currently I'm listening to one of my all time favourite albums which is Anarchy um, by Chumbawamba um, is on repeat for me at the moment please do um, I've got all sorts of social medias uh, my um, Facebook is Isaac Hughes Dennis Music. My Instagram is Isaac Hughes Dennis. Um, my Twitter is Isaac H underscore D or Isaac Hughes Dennis. Uh, there's a running theme here. I think I have a YouTube as well, which is similarly uh, named. I've also got Bandcamp, uh, which is Isaac Hughes Dennis dot Bandcamp dot com, and I've recently put out an EP um, which is called Covid. It's um, about my experiences with the lockdown, so you can buy and listen to that there as well. <laughs>